Alright, so today's mission is launching a geostationary satellite network around Kerbin. So I can start going deeper into space for some more complex missions. So this is the build of the satellites I will be using. I'm just kind of experimenting with some different stuff just to get, get it started, you know. There's some trusses up here. Truss adapter. Uh, that's a little big. I'll go with some different ones. Throw some antennas up here just for looks. Uh, those panels are kind of dinky. Use these medium panels. The stabilizer. The coupler. I've been having some problems launching more sophisticated, I guess you could say, rockets. So I've just kind of went for a easier mission that maybe couldn't be plagued with the glitches that KSP2 has been having recently. There's the fairing. They're very finicky. As you can see, uh, building the main booster here and some wings. KSP2 is all about wings. There's some clamps. There's that finicky fairing again. This is pretty much it. We're just going to uh, throw some control in here so we can deorbit the booster after we put the satellite in position. Uh, kind of last minute decided to add these tanks just for a little extra delta V for a buffer. You definitely want to have this just in case anything happens. I've been having troubles keeping a steady apoapsis and periapsis as they randomly just move on their own without any engine input, no thrust in any direction. And throw those clamps on, get rid of that one. And I think she's ready. We're going to go ahead and go to the launch pad. And we are lifting off. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here just to move things on a better pace so they don't drag for no reason. I had the gimbal enabled on those outer vector engines, which turned out to be a mistake because it almost gave it too much control. We're going to let it ride for this launch, but uh, on the next two launches, I actually disable the gimbal on those vectors, and it worked out a lot better. I brought my apoapsis up to about 85,000. Doesn't really matter, it's just... Always get in orbit before I make any maneuvers. Just gonna fast travel to the apoapsis and then do a burn to circularize. And then I'm going to start taking my apoapsis out to the geostationary orbit. That's about 2,863-64 kilometers. Which I'm not sure if you can actually hold that stably in KSP2 yet. Because like I said... It just moves on its own. 
It has a complete mind of its own. So we're gonna burn like right up at the apoapsis here so we don't disturb this. We are almost there, and it looks like we have plenty of Delta V to deorbit our booster after we make our final fine adjustments on our orbit. So I actually wasn't thinking about it, but I lucked out in which the position this ended up turned out to be a good position to triangularize with one satellite directly over the space center, which was pure luck. It's not perfect. I kind of just eyeball it and then it gets a little off, but it's good enough for me in early access. And the finicky periapsis aps apoapsis markers are back. I don't know if you guys remember those. Also the bearing there. It's not really a elegant looking decouple as it doesn't really spread. It just kind of flies off the front there and clips with all the parts on its way out. No cracking though, so that's good. Sometimes when you detach the fairing, it will like immediately get sucked to the earth like it's almost magnetic. This game definitely needs some polishing. Just made some fine adjustments there. And you see my apoapsis did get off there and I didn't even notice as I was doing this mission but like i said it's close enough for me i'm just going to deorbit this booster and we will be on to the next launch we are coming in hot oh, those wings doing their job Keeping the nose pointed prograde. That it mattered at that point, but it was just nice to see. Here's our second launch. Is the the Delta V estimates are wild in this game. They just constantly change. I can see change as you go up into the atmosphere, you know, the engines have different thrust depending on if you're in atmosphere or in vacuum. But it's not even that. You can save a rocket with a certain amount of delta V and then load that same rocket and it will have a completely different number of delta v ditch those boosters the first stage circularize our orbit once again didn't take too much because of our initial burn was pretty decent And this is where I worry about positioning a little bit. Once again, I didn't completely forget forgot to set positioning off the space center and just got lucky. As you can see from this shot that it just so happened to triangularize with the space center. Make our uh, fine tune adjustments here. Bring our 
periapsis out. And this one is in position. Just going to... That's where our third and final satellite for this geostationary satellite network will be. Going to deorbit these boosters. And what, you, what you're not seeing is like a quick save and reload because whenever you decouple and switch to a booster, uh, it wouldn't have a comm net for whatever reason. So the fix for that is just quick save and quick load. And that's kind of why I like when it when I switch to the booster, it, it seems like it's in a different position because it is. We're at the launch pad for our third and final launch. I don't know what happened to my struts here. I didn't pay attention enough to tell if they were on the second launch, but they were definitely there for the first launch and I can see them on the body of the rocket but they're not attached. We got to talk about it a lot last launch, but uh, as you can see, the with the gimbal turn off, turned off on those vector engines, it's much more stable, even without the struts. Kind of was just in a rough spot, so I just didn't really want to work on getting prograde. So I just killed my engines to detach those fuel tanks. Let them run across the wings a little bit. I'm gonna circularize our orbit here. kind of messed up here. I didn't burn long enough. I'm not sure what happened. So I just do a radial outburn. That's why it's always nice to have that extra delta V just to fix any mistakes you might have. And I didn't on the other one. I should have, but I didn't fix my inclination. But I'm going to go ahead and set the inclination on this based on another satellite just just so at least two of them are close well really yeah, not perfect but close once again I'm going to wait for a better spot which looks like this is it to bring out my periapsis Almost perfect. So it looks like I'll need to catch up. So I'll leave my periapsis down a little bit. Should have actually brought it up from there. But I passed it. So since I wasn't all the way up to my apoapsis here I just radio radial out burned go ahead and do that stuff and do the final finishing touches on our orbit here to get into that geostationary orbit Kind of mess this one up. I fat finger it a couple times, and so it takes a few more adjustments than it should to to get in that 
perfect geostationary orbit, but I get it eventually here. Always helps to have the extra delta V. And there we are. Triangular geostationary orbit with one of the satellites directly over the Kerbin Space Center. I think I'm happy with this. You can see the altitude on that one is a little off, but that's okay. The triangular, the triangularization is going to get off a little bit as time goes on. I'm going to warp here just to show you how that little bit turns into a lot over time. Uh, it wasn't too bad. As you can see, they're getting off. I guess as time goes on, they will get more and more out of orbit. But we stayed directly over the space center, and I think that's all that matters here. We got to extend the the top antennas on those other ones. I know they're just for show. And we are going to deorbit our final booster here, and this mission will be complete. Do love how you can see those those galaxies in the distance. We had a little extra delta V here, so we are going to come in at a straight descent and blow it up. So there's the end result. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for me. And that is pretty much it. I appreciate you guys watching. If you did like the video, go ahead and leave a like. And I'm trying to get my subscribers up. So if you would uh, mind subscribing, I would really appreciate it. So as always, thanks for watching.